The years following the Civil War were years of disorder and violence in the United States. During this period, one outlaw became notorious above all the rest. Though his name was Jesse Woodson James, and he came from a respected family, this did not prevent Jesse James from passing into legend and history as the most dangerous outlaw in the United States. For many years, sheriffs, federal police, and the best detectives of the famous Pinkerton Agency pursued him in vain while his presence was reported from one end of the Western territories to the other. The reward for his capture, dead or alive, increased from day to day. It had reached the incredible sum of $30,000 when suddenly he disappeared without leaving a trace. May I ask who you're pretting up for this morning? For the prettiest blonde in the world. You got any idea who that is? Flatterer. You mind giving me a little kiss this morning, Mrs. James? Later. After breakfast, Jesse. Well, will you help me with a tie, at least? <laughs> How do you feel now? Is everything all right? Why do you ask me that? I just can't believe we're together at last, Jesse. I'm afraid of losing you. You won't lose me, sweetheart. You'll see. You're just afraid someone will recognize me. But no one knows who you are here. Now, nobody's going to believe that Jesse James has decided to become a peaceable family man. A law-abiding citizen who's got the most marvelous wife in the world. <laughs> Say something. I can't. <laughs> Look at your boots. I rub till they shine like new, Daddy. How many times do I have to tell you to knock before you enter? Huh? I've been looking for you, Dad. We got work to do. I'll wait in the hall. All right. Well, I want to help you, Mom. Here are your boots. Like them? Gorgeous. You're getting to be quite a little housekeeper. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I told you not to touch that? You know it's not meant to play with. You could hurt yourself. I want to be a cowboy. You got to teach me how to shoot. 
Uncle Bob said you could shoot when you were six. Will you show me? Not now. When you're older. Now, let's get to work. I don't want to help you. And tell me now, is that the way to hang it? Or this way? Now, turn it. That's better, huh? Now, give me my hammer and some nails, will you? Here. It's your pistol. It could be a gunfighter. I doubt it. Hey, it's Uncle Bob. Wait. Who is it, Jess? It should be open. Why, sure. It's my cousin Bob. Why is he coming so early? Danged if I know. Hello, Sam. Hello. Hello there, Bob. Come on in. Howdy, Nancy. Is Jesse there? Yes, he's in the living room. Hi, Uncle Bob. Hello, Bill. Bob, I'll get you a cup of coffee. Thank you. Hey, Bill, look. Look, I thought of you. You like it? Just a minute. I'll be right there, Bob. Look, Papa. Uncle Bob gave me two carvels. He knows you. Come and sit down. Get out of the way. Twenty years later, Bill James, the son of Jesse James, was the spitting image of his father, but only in his external characteristics. His spirit was completely different. He was peaceable, and just what he needed to live on was enough for him. He had no enemies, except the man who had killed his father by shooting him in the back. Bill hoped their paths would never cross, because then he knew he would avenge his father. Five bucks and five more. I can't play with these guys. Give me some whiskey. Well, I'll drink to your health. Every time I come into this town, you pick me clean. Want to play some more? No, I lost enough. You're real sharp the game, Mike. Can I take his place? You got any money? All I got is my pistol and my horse. Well, that's fine. How much do you think they're worth? Ten dollars. Yeah, must be a pretty good horse. He's better and pretty good. Go have a look. I'll take your word for it. Sit down. Mm, you can have my seat, friend. Thanks. Wow, looks like an interesting game. Deal me in. Ten dollars, okay? Anything you like. Cars? No, I'm out. Two. All right. Boy, no luck this time, stranger. Too bad. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. You win. Here, it's all yours. Oh, don't worry. You'll win it back sometime. Come on out and see the horse. I'm in a hurry. He's a funny customer. <laughs> hey, it ain't even loaded. Never saw that before. An unarmed man in the West? Hmm. You call out a pretty good horse? You trying to pull a fast one or what, mister? Hey, don't get all upset. He is a good horse. But skinny, that's all. Are you kidding? That skill ain't worth a dime, mister. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's a good horse. And how old's that pirate book? Nothing to it. I want my ten bucks and I want it now. I'm sorry, but that wasn't the deal. There, he's yours. 
mine. You played me for a second. You can run all on you. Stop. Stop. You better lay off him, Mike. <laughs> I'll fix you no way. You just watch. All right, okay. Let me at him. I'll spill his guts. Listen, stranger. Get out of here before it's too late. Just a little friendly advice. <laughs> we can see you ain't acquainted with old Mike. If you don't clear out, I'm going to cut you to bits. You lousy horse thief. I'd like to see a coward shoot a man in the back instead of fighting square. Don't anyone move. What are you getting mixed up in this for? I just told you. I won't permit you to shoot down a defenseless man. Maybe you're right there, Mr. Davis, but I'm gonna bust his head open just the same. <laughs> it isn't your lucky day. You shouldn't have done that. Mr. Davis, don't you think you're taking advantage of your position? What do you think? Here you are. You're lucky I don't arrest you. Hey, you. Give me some whiskey, the best. And some cold water. Buy me a drink, too. Another glass. I didn't need your help, mister. I can look after myself. You'll admit you're a bit careless to turn your back on a revolver and forget your hat. I thought you might say thank you to go with the whiskey. Your help. Thank you. My name's Alan Davis, and yours? Bill. Bill. Bill Smith. Hey, Jackie, let's have a drink. Your friends aren't going to give up. I'm sure of it. And I can tell you they're pretty quick on the draw. The main thing is not to let them get you go. Well, what about them drinks? Help yourself. It's all yours. Don't take much guts, does it, when you're tied to a lawman's shirt tail? Things might go a little different without the law to protect you. Grease it. Trigger sticks. Say, it's not bad. But I wouldn't advise you to stay here. If you're looking for work, it'd be better for you to come to Salt Lake with me. With no horse? How am I going to do that? You're going to take me on yours? <laughs> I wouldn't be comfortable for either of us, so stay here for a while. The government's handing out free land in a few days. What do you do? Well, I work for the Department of Justice in San Antonio. Or to put it simply, you're a lawman, aren't you? Trouble with the law? I'm not against the law, but I'm not for it. Why not? Listen, if I don't have any money, it's because I never answer a question. Especially not when it's from the police. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You'll have to pay. <clears throat> hey, listen. I'd feel guilty letting a man like you go off on arm. Here, take my revolver. Don't worry, it's present. Well, you might need it, Commissioner. You need it worse than I do. I don't understand. Oh, I've got another. Say, why don't you go to the three-star ranch? Say, I sent you. Maybe they'll be able to take you on. And, oh, I forgot. There's a few bullets. Don't forget my name. Alan Davis. So long. And thanks. So long. Oh, wait a second. Where is Mr. Marshall? At the ranch. Tell him I'm in the area for a few days, and I want to see him tomorrow. Hmm? 
and behave yourselves, huh? Or else, hmm? Now let's have a drink. Five whiskey. On me, fella. Star Ranch? Yeah, got any objections? No, no, don't take it that way. Come on, climb in. I got the feeling it's better to be on your side than again you. You got a dead eye and a good rider. You looking for work? You ask a lot of questions, don't you? <laughs> Just curious. Giddy up, come on. I'm the foreman. We don't need anybody. Listen, I'm not trying to question your authority, but I'd like to hear it straight from the boss. I own the ranch. What can I do for you? They told me in town there was work for a good cowboy at the Three Star Ranch. Sure there is, for a good one. Are you a good one? Want me to prove it? Go ahead. Hold on to this. Give me that. Yeah, lots of luck. Easy there. They had a boy. Easy does it. Be nice now. That it. That. <laughs> Easy. There we are. Good boy. Come on. Over here. That's it. Now stop. Come on, boy. with a silver dollar.
<laughs> Went off in my hand. Well, you're a good man to have around. What's your name? Bill, ma'am. Bill Smith. Smith. That's not a name, it's an alias. I said the name Smith. All right, Smith. You're on the payroll. Hey! Hurry up! It's all ready. Come and get your chow. You know, the food wasn't much to start with. Might not be worth swallowing. Come on, you can talk afterwards. Hurry up. You can have lunch with us. If you can stand it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot to mention I was sent to your ranch by Alan Davis. Alan Davis? You know him? Not well. Seemed like a nice fellow. Why didn't you say so before? Where is he? How is he? He's gone to Salt Lake City, but he'll come by soon. Aren't you going to have some lunch? You made a big mistake to take him on. He's a troublemaker. You can see that. Do you happen to know Alan Davis? No. He's one of my best friends and one of my father's, too. He recommends this man. That's quite enough. Come on, hurry up. It's getting cold. Well, go wash your hands first. You're going to lick your fingers on right, Stop bagging, will you? Uh, come on, go on. Oh, you give us all a pain where it hurts, Cookie. I'll oh, get along. Come on, don't argue with me, Slob. All right, they are. Come to the table like a bunch of cattle. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hurry up. Listen, mister. What is it? It's impossible. What's the matter? No, nothing. Here, shake my hand. I'm the cook out here. Why don't you sit down with us? Maybe he's waiting for ninja tasting. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down there. Hey, old Alonzo really put himself out today. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Want some coffee? Huh? Pass me the bread. See ya. It's a good size ranch? No, not very. Just happens we're the only ones who haven't sold out to Marshall. Lord, he'll get us whether we like it or not. He's the biggest crook in these parts. Who is Marshall? The biggest ranch in the area. He'll soon get hold of all the land he wants for practically nothing. But Miss Dorothy isn't giving in. If all the small landowners had her guts. But one of these days, he'll stop him. He's going too far. How so? There's a law going through on the ownership of land that'll hit him worse than anybody else. I'd be very much surprised if he could show deeds of property for the land he owns. How many head of cattle has Marshall got? You're pretty curious, ain't you? Yeah, Marshall's got lots of cattle. What's it to you? Nothing. Just curious, that's all. Hey, you. You call that a decent servant? Well, I'm keeping out a little for the new fella. That's only natural, ain't it? First we get served. <laughs> oh, don't you worry, Bill. When they get finished, I'm going to cook you up some real Mexican food. And I'll promise you one thing. You'll lick your fingers clean up to the elbow. Saddle up. Now, you tell me frankly what you think of that. Best I had in a long time. I cooked it special for myself. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't you worry. You see, I always cook a little extra. <laughs> they told me what you did to the foreman a while ago. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> yeah, why? Well, I'm not crazy about him. Every time I see him, I could heave a frying pan at his head. What's he done? <clears throat> well, first of all, Bruce wants to marry Miss Dorothy, and I don't like that. And I must say, she don't like it any more than I do. Then what? Say, haven't we met somewhere before? The more I see of you, the more you look familiar. No, I'm sure you're wrong. 
Oh, I don't get it. Tell me your name again. Bill Smith. Oh, you ain't from Missouri. Nope, I've been there. Oh, in that case, I must have met your father there. It's impossible. My father was a poor farmer who died 20 years ago. Hmm. You're talking about the foreman. And I was saying you better watch him. He's against people with brains. That's why there's only idiots around here. What's your name? Alonzo Pedro Miguel Amandaris. For enemies. Alonzo to my friends. Al. For my nearest and dearest. And ah. Yeah. <laughs> That's for the gals. <laughs> There's a right pretty one. Oh, really? Oh, that's all you can say. Yeah, why? Why, a girl like that ought to make your blood sizzle. Oh, yeah, well, my blood's all sizzled away. Hello, Smith. Hello, Miss Dorothy. How are you getting along in the ranch? Fine, just fine. Thanks, no doubt, to your presence. Uh, but I thought... And to that of a lunch. Uh, that's something. It's unusual to see him in a good humor. Miss Dorothy. Yeah? Clem just got back. He says several stallions have disappeared in the Sierra. We gotta send some men after them. Stealing my horses again. Send your two best men after them. But Sam and Zeke ain't here. Uh, you go, Smith. Slim will go with you. Slim can stay. Alonzo will go with me. Oh, hey, listen, Bill. That's not my job, you know. I'm the cook. Do it for me, Alonzo. Come on, Al. Hurry it up, Alonzo. We ain't got all day. Alonzo, Pedro, Miguel, I'm a Dars, if you don't mind. You come all the... Well, okay, but first let me pick up my little Mexican saddle. It's comfortable, and I can't travel without it. <laughs> you find me a horse around here, and I'll eat him. Oh, you really thought you were going to find horses? No, Bill. Stallions don't get lost in these parts. They get stolen. And Bruce knows that? I think so. What makes you think so? Well, because it's him that does the stealing. Then why'd he send me to look for him? No, oh, just so folks won't go suspecting him and he can go on and play his double game. I told you, he is the sort of fella you have to watch out for. Ah, oh, what did I tell you? See them down there? The horses and the rustlers. Ah, oh, those dirty rats. Give me the right. Boy, this time they're going to get the lesson they deserve. <laughs> I'll just knock out the last one. Oh, the best thing would be just to wound him so we can get some information out of him. All I ever learned to aim at is the heart and the head. Take him back to the ranch, see what Bruce has to say for himself. There's only one way to beat the settlers and make sure we get the government's grant of land for ourselves. We gotta round up all the horses so they can't take part in that wagon race. And especially, we got to win over the federal commissioner, Alan Davis. Sure, I'll do that. I'll take care of him. <laughs> Cut it out, you two. I don't want any arguments. I just said the commissioner's got to be won over. Sure, Marshal, but we got a little new... Will, you, chase it? Will, Will you stop it? I know Commissioner Davis and a stranger give you a, a well-deserved lesson, if that's your report. It's rather damaging to my prestige, not to speak of yours. Well, it was a bad day. All right, it happened. And as for the question of Miss Dorothy, I'll return to it very soon. Ah, she'll begin to see reason when all the horses disappear. What's your opinion, Bruce? She won't give up easily, I know that. She's mighty stubborn. And she's got guts. Mm, well, that's too bad. We'll have to resort to other means if and when word say that. Alan Davis just arrived. I just seen him go in the sheriff's office. Let's leave here separately. You two, Nat and Bruce, better go out the back way.
In any case, the commissioner's for me. We'll discuss that later. I told you he's mine. And I'll say he's mine, George, so shut your fat mouth. <laughs> Are you two going to shut up or not? Listen, Mike. Take your hand. I'm sorry, Commissioner. I can't find this trader. Well, go on looking. Maybe he's going home. Thank you. Glad to see you, Mr. Davis. I was very sorry to have missed you yesterday. Yes, I was sorry too, but I had a little business to attend to. Did you get my message? You certainly put things back in order here. We had a lot of quarrels, and you settled everything before the big day. Come on. Let me offer you a drink. Here's another one. Now we have 30 wagons in the race. That won't do. I think there's too many. I happen not to share your opinion. The more the merrier. That's well, we'll idea. see. <laughs> what do you say, Commissioner? Pretty aren't they? Hmm. Let's sit down. Hey, Frank, some whiskey. I'm entirely at your disposal, David. But of course, I don't need to tell you that if it's any use, I'm ready to accompany you to all the ranches in the neighborhood. Uh, are there many of them opposed to land reform? Let's not kid ourselves. They're all against it. Yes, I was afraid of that. But the law's the law, and they'll respect it. Do you think so? If you can produce some convincing arguments, there won't be any bloodshed, I'm sure. Well, in that case, since you kindly offered to join me, we can begin our tour right away. I must be absolutely sure that there won't be any incidents which would be regrettable for all concerned. I'm not to prevent that. That's him there. I think that we may have tripped. Oh, hello, Mr. Davis. <laughs> How are you? Hello. We were beginning to get a little nervous waiting for you to arrive. Uh, I did come by yesterday, but nobody seems you to know. You said a mouthful, Mr. Davis. We're literally swamped without a town. Yes, I think a good many have come for the race. Yes, but you know they're still pouring in. The trouble is there's bound to be certain undesirable elements. You bet. Every day we hear a cattle being stolen. Cattle's been disappearing mysteriously for some time now. Ah, that's no surprise. I thought we might have trouble. We'll track down the guilty ones. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> There, he's coming this way. Now we're going to have some fireworks. Hi, Bruce. How you doing? You don't look too happy. <laughs> What's the matter? You sick or something? But you didn't eat any of my cooking today. What are you beating your gums about? find the horses? What do you think? Did I? I don't like your manners. I ask you a question. I want an answer. We could use some answers, too, if you're in the mood. Right. How'd that happen? Suppose you explain. You should know. Oh. Ah. Get him, Bill! Go to Come him. on, go to it, boy. Hit him. Alfred Brennan. He's dead. How'd that happen? It was one of the horse thieves, Miss Dorothy. You were paying him, and this is how he was repaying you. We had to make an example of him. Yeah, this got away with at least 60 horses. What have I got to do with it? You're my foreman, aren't you? You're the one who's responsible for what happens here and the loyalty of all the hands here. Take the body to town. 
You two. Zeke, Sam. And you too, Bill. Go to the top of the hill and bring back all the horses that are left. Some damn nerve to show his ugly face around here. Alan! Alan Davis is with him. Alan! Dorothy! Oh, Alan. <laughs> God, it's wonderful to see you. How are you? What's happened? Any trouble at the ranch? I saw a dead man on the wagon. Yes, I must tell you about that. What we need in this godforsaken country is more men like you. Dorothy's been marvelous since her father's demise. You know, I was sorry to hear that. I wanted to come and see you right away, but all I could manage was that letter. I've told her often it was dangerous for a young girl to be on this isolated ranch. There's lots of outlaws in this area, and this ranch is too big for her to handle all by herself. But now, what with the expropriation law, she's going to be relieved to most of her holdings. Ain't that so, Dorothy? And you're helping me, too, when you steal my cattle. Huh? Say, we've met somewhere, haven't we? Why, it's Bill. Bill, you're being very quiet. Never seen me before in your life. How are you, son? Hello, Commissioner. What's wrong with you? That's no way to greet your friends. What's the long face for? I'm very glad you got a job here. How's he doing, Dorothy? Pretty well. A bit on the melancholy side, perhaps, but he's got plenty of guts, as I believe your men will be able to tell you. Hey, Marshal? Marshal, his real name, Alan. Yes, and he's the biggest cattleman in the region. Oh, by the way, I have news that'll interest you. What is it? Of course, you don't have to accept, but you might win 200 acres of land if you enter the wagon race. We need men like you, honest and ready for anything. What do you say? I'll do it. Dorothy, you take part in the wagon race, but he doesn't have a horse or wagon. He doesn't have a thing. I'll take care of that. Don't worry, I'll give him whatever he wants. Then we'll see who wins. A lot of people will resent it, but I have faith in him. And well you may. I bet anything that Bill beats them all. Why are you looking at me? Excuse me, you haven't met Mr. Marshall, a real pioneer who's made the region what it is today. When he got here, the place was a desert. And this, this is Mr. Strader. Why, Bill, what's the matter with you? Come here. It's impossible. What is it, Bill? Nothing, nothing. Thanks. What is it? Do you know Marshall? No, but he reminds me of someone I once knew. Excuse me. Do you mind, Dorothy? So you still don't want to give us your support? No. Your father would have been on our side. My father would have done just what I'm doing. We've already got control of all the wagons. We'll occupy all the best positions. What do you hope to accomplish by opposing us? You're never satisfied, are you? You've been stealing my horses and a man's already been killed. But it wasn't. Leave me alone, Marshal. Hmm. I can't understand what's the matter with him. He's very strange. I must say he's intrigued me from the beginning. You'd better keep an eye on him, Dorothy. And as for you, what did Marshall want? He's always after me. Ever since I've been alone, anyway. Tell me about it. All the property owners have joined him. They've cornered all the wagons. There's every reason to believe they've been stealing my horses. I'm sure they'll get hold of my lands eventually, like all the rest. But I'm not going to give in, Alan. I'll admit. I've been wondering about him. You just hang on. Don't give in. That's what I'm doing. But I'm the only one. While I'm here, the law protects you. That's why we must have Bill and others like him in the race. You'll see how important a victory yes. is. Thank you, Alan. Don't you worry. Yeah? 
Yeah? Why did you go without orders? I wasn't ordered not to. Now you can go to Mr. Marshall and tell him I've had all my remaining horses put in the stable. I can't see why I'm supposed to tell him that. So he won't go to the trouble of sending men out to steal them. And you might stay there, too, because you're fired. You mind telling me what for? I don't owe you any explanations. You don't, huh? Miss Dorothy, I couldn't help overhearing what you just said to that rat. And I want you to know I was proud of you as I could be. Where's Bill? Oh, there he is now. My old eyes don't deceive me. Good. Well, tell him I've got to speak to him right away. You can count on me, Miss Dorothy. I'll tell him that. You wanted to speak to me? Yes. I fired Bruce, and I want you to take charge. Mind telling me what led you to think I'd accept? Well, frankly, I didn't think for a minute that you'd refuse. I'm sorry, Miss Dorothy, but I don't think I'm up to the job. I understand. Bruce is a tough customer. He might look for a chance to even the score, huh? If you knew me a little better, you wouldn't talk that way. Is there anything else? Nothing. Has he been to see you, Miss Dorothy? It took a bit of time to persuade him. He's a bit nervous these days, uh, more than usual. Alonzo, you're his only friend. Maybe you can explain it. I asked him, and he refused. <laughs> well, I've got my own opinion on that subject. Tell me what you think, Alonzo. <laughs> well, love often makes people very nervous. Who's he in love with? I'd ask him if I were you. A pretty girl shouldn't have any trouble at all making a fellow like him talk. Me, I say he's in love. Who knows, could, uh, could be he's in love with yourself. Now, really? You ought to be shaved. Why should I? I told the truth. seem to like your work. But since Marshall's visit, you've been ejected. What's wrong? Nothing. Any one of my men would have been overjoyed if I'd asked him to take charge here. But you. Tell me what's wrong. Is there anything I can do? I'm grateful to you, Miss Dorothy. There's nothing you can do. You aren't worried on account of the race. What's the matter? Has Marshall been up to his old tricks? I'll race. Don't you worry. Well, if you refuse to take charge here, there are others who will. Zeke, wait a second. Yes, Miss Dorothy. I fired Bruce. You're going to take over his job. Do you agree? <laughs> you bet, Miss Dorothy. Why, I'm the happiest man in the world. From now on, you're the boss around here. Stop him! Don't you come out here, Miss Dorothy. 
It's a downright scandal when folks get killed and nobody does anything. On Miss Power's ranch, a man's been murdered. A man's been killed on my ranch, too. We mustn't allow it to go on. The situation's never been as bad as this. It's all because we've no authority. There's too many bad elements in this part of the country, coming for all they can make out of the big wagon race. Among them, I might mention a gunslinger wanted for murder. If I told you who he was, you'd shake in your boots. Our commissioner knows him. But maybe he's not aware of his past. You don't mention the settlers. You think maybe they're stealing their own horses? Oh, isn't it more likely a thief has got them out of circulation so the wagon race will get canceled? Guess that's up to you to prove. Or the sheriff. What about it? You think we'll get caught napping, Marshal? Of course you won't get caught. You're very quick to denounce certain regrettable activities. But you're quite reticent about others which are equally unfortunate. If you're so upset by the horse stealing and the murders which have been the result, well, you can always do something. There are many settlers waiting to see if anybody wants to help them. Why don't you all do it? It would be a noble gesture lending them your horses. Sorry, that's none of your business. You're suggesting we work against our own interest? Give them horses so they can take our lands away from us? Ha, huh, there we are. I knew it. I was sure it would come out sooner or later. Watch out, gentlemen. What you've done is pretty revolting, and it's my duty to warn you. I'll oppose you by whatever methods I can. That's all I have to say. Alan. I've just decided to give all of my horses to any of the settlers who are going to need them. Good, these poor folks will be grateful, even though some may be less enthusiastic. I'll tell them. Wait a minute. Silence. Silence. Listen, please, all of you. That includes the fiddlers. Listen, everybody. Even there in front of the door. If anyone among you has traveled a long way hoping to enter this race, listen to me. I'm quite aware that some of you have had your horses stolen. The authorities can do nothing to recover them for the time being. However, Miss Dorothy Powers, who owns the Three Star Ranch, has asked me to announce uh -huh. that she will lend her horses to all those who require them for the race. Speak up. Don't be shy. Come on. Who needs horses for the race? Ah. Uh -huh. I see you're worried about what might happen to you. Speak up, George. I accept the offer you made. I don't give a hang about the consequences. Your name, please. George Rivers. Somebody stole my horses. And if you give me the means, I'll worry about the risks. I'm his wife and with him all the way. Wonderful, Mrs. Rivers. That's the spirit. Who'll follow their example? The horses have been offered. They're free for the asking, friends. Come on now, speak up. <laughs> not worth waiting. All right, you come tonight to the ranch to pick out your horses. Right, Mr. Oh, thank you. I noticed Bill accompanied you. That's fine. Yes, I'm very glad he's around. Hi there, Bill. Howdy. Oh. So you're still taking part in the race, huh? Yep. I don't think you die of boredom, anyhow. I don't either. So long. So long. Aren't you feeling well? No, I love it here. I often came here with my father. We used to come and watch the river. When the river rose, this is the only patch that was left dry. I remember it as if it were yesterday. I used to be so frightened when the river rose and everything was washed away by the current, all the cattle. And then you think of the whole harvest wiped out. <laughs> I admit, I wanted to change your mind, but I see it's no use. Tell me, are you sorry I asked you to bring me here? I'm at your service, Miss Dorothy. Call me Dorothy. Why? I want you to. Certain things are difficult to explain, aren't they? Will you help me, Dal?
Excuse me, Bill, but I've always been very curious. Tell me what's the matter, please. Ever since you saw Marshall, you're different. What is it? Please, Bill, answer me. Well, if you really want to know, I thought it was the man I'm looking for. It might be at that. Maybe my memory's off. It's been so long. Go on, Bill. You can trust me. A man killed my father when I was a kid. He shot him in the back. Even though they were like two brothers, I've never been able to find him. And do you think Marshall could be the killer? Not the first time I suspected someone. Suddenly I feel I've found the man I'm looking for. And each time I had to admit I was wrong. It wasn't. Of course, when my father was killed, I was very young. But I knew the man. Only it's difficult to recognize him after so many years. You know, it was Marshall who stole my horses. Alonzo told me. Why don't you denounce him? I will. But the time isn't ripe yet. He's still dangerous. My ranch is surrounded completely by his lands. All you can see is his. He lets us use this bit of road, but it's a favor. Despite the fact that I'm the only one who won't give way to him. Now you see, Bill, why I need you so much. I'm desperately in need of a man like you. Let me ask you once again. Count on me, Dorothy. And forgive me for yesterday. Thank you, Bill. I'm so grateful. Well, in any case, you're not alone, Dorothy. Davis is for you. That's quite a bit. Alan is an old friend of the family. I love him, like my own brother. He'll do anything for me. But he's cold as the law. The law's all that counts for him. I prefer your help, Bill. Don't make a move. Put up your hands. What are you doing, Bruce? So this is who you threw me out for. You make a beautiful couple. And you too, Slim. Parker, what do you want? Don't move, Smith. Get his gun. Easy there, Bill. I get very nervous. Stand against the tree over there and try to behave yourself or you'll regret it. Uh, Parker, no, let go of him. You cowards, let go of him, I said. <laughs> You'll be sorry for this, Bruce. Leave him alone. You filthy coward. Let go. She's getting to be a nuisance. Take her away. Don't <laughs> coward. <laughs> well, what's wrong? No fight left, and I heard you were full of it. You better kill me now. Because if I ever find you again, you won't get away, I warn you. Stop there, Miss Dorothy. You'll pay for this. You... Now, go look after your boyfriend. And don't let me ever see him again. Come on, let's go. Bill. 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 I'm okay. My darling. Race will be starting soon. And I'm certain we all want to run this race fair and square. Each contestant can only hope to obtain a single plot of land. Just one. Whoever gets to the billboards first will become proprietor of the land which corresponds to it. But whoever ends up first in the general classification will receive as a reward the silver green ranch covering 200 acres and worth $10,000. Now here's a list of 100 acre plots. The Jim Flood plot, the Tom Bailey, Texas Ranch, Arizona, and Rio Jim. The 75 uh, Don't you want a bit of a snort to keep up your courage? No, thanks, Alonzo. And, and you. Come on, it can only do you good. I appreciate it. No, thanks. Well, nobody wants any. I know you'll mind either. Oconnor Valley 
and collar it. I repeat that the lucky contestant who wins the race will receive the silver green red worth an estimated ten thousand dollars. <coughs> now get ready, all of you. Please prepare yourselves. The starting signal is the third pistol shot. One, two, and go! His husband and wife been killed. Everything leads us to believe the accident occurred with malice aforethought. Before she died, Mrs. Rivers spoke the name of the Offord brothers. Yeah, I saw the whole thing. They passed me, but ahead of them was a stranger, that fellow there. That's him now with Miss Powers. Are they both dead? Yes. Did you pass them before the accident? No, they were in the lead, but I was able to see the murderers. They hooked their wheel and capsized the wagon. Was it the Ford brothers? I don't know them. But I do. It's them. They work at Marshall's ranch. Take them into custody, Sheriff. I'd very much like to hear their story. Hey, down there, 
there's Zeke. What's happening? Who came in first? Well, we did, but there was an accident. You slept through it all, huh? Oh, no, I did. You, you know I'm nearsighted. And... Oh, my head. There they are. The one on the seat is Nat, the eldest. Nat Iford, get down. What do you want? In the name of the law, I arrest you and your brother on the charge of murder. You're responsible for the murder of the Rivers. You have proof of that? We have witnesses. For the time being, you're being held on charges, and the award of the prizes will be suspended until sentence is delivered on you by the court. <laughs> what do you mean? We want first prize. If you want to arrest this commissioner, you'll have to use force. Watch it! Thanks. But you'd better not get mixed up in this. Sorry, Commissioner, I had a debt with you. From now on, we're even. If that's federal justice, we don't need any of it out here. Yeah. Protect outlaws and clap honest men in jail. In fact, it makes you wonder if they haven't teamed up to win the race and split the prizes. <laughs> you think everyone's like you, Marshal. If you insult me just once more, it'll be my pleasant duty to arrest you. Don't move. Don't anybody move, you hear? Otherwise, you'll have to deal with Alonzo Pedro Miguel Amandaris. Complete with Now, you watch out. Nothing to please me more than to plug a few of you. Oh, what the devil's got into this thing? How am I going to make it work? <laughs> Celebrate your victory. An excuse for a party. Marshal and his men have returned to lick their wounds. Come on, Bill, come with me. Forgive me, Dorothy, but there's certain things I can't forget, no matter what. Evening, Dorothy. May we speak to you for a minute? Yes. Yes, of course. We'd better go inside. Excuse me, Bill. There's one thing I'd love to know. What's the party for? Is it for a marriage or a funeral for two? Anybody got an answer? Or the cat got your tongue? Why don't you do something steady? Yeah, Quiet, fat boy. No, you can do it. Well, they come here looking for a brawl. We better start thinking about Miss Dorothy. Yes, yeah, so right. <laughs> All right, everybody, continue the party. Help yourselves. We'll be right back. You eat something, too. Hope it chokes him. <laughs> Disturbing you? What do you want? Excuse me, won't you, Miss Dorothy? I'm very sorry to interrupt you. My abject apologies, Jim. Excuse me again. I, I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't important. It's only because I'm in a sort of a fix. Has anybody seen my medicine? What's the matter with you? Well, you've forgotten, haven't you, that I've got epilepsy, and if I don't get my medicine, 
I always get my seizures by my whole body shaking. I, I can feel it coming up. Oh, oh, here it is. Oh, here it is. Now, it's beginning. Here it is. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. I'm sick, somebody. Did you do something? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, poor Lonzo. What's wrong with you? Get over here quickly. I can't hold him. Oh, poor Lonzo. He looks awful. Help me. I can't go on the alone. Come on, here, quickly. Poor Lonzo. Oh, we got to get him. Stand back. Give him some air. There, there. Take it easy. Come on, now it's almost over. Put your hands up. You hurt him. Hands off. What's the matter? Are you deep? Faster. Take that weapons, Alonzo. Great. Get a move on. Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you. Can I relieve you, too? Most obliging, gentlemen. Thank you. And thank you most of all, Mr. Marshall. Your hands off. Hand it over. Go to hell. All right, but I'm keeping an eye on you. <laughs> now tell me what these gentlemen wanted, Dorothy. I can't see that it's any business of yours. Nothing you do can help you now, Bill James. I thought we didn't know your name and had no way of finding out that you're a professional gunman who kills for the sake of killing. This morning, the Ifords were arrested for your crime. Your father would be proud of you. <laughs> Watch it. Put up your hands. Come on. You convinced now, Davis? You know who he is? Bill James, a killer. He just murdered O'Connor in cold blood. Give me your gun, Bill. You can't get away with this sort of thing. No, sorry, Davis. I can't obey you today. Get in there quick. Go on. I know the evidence is against me. But all these men are killers. We can't afford to have scruples. Let's get going, Alonzo. You won't get far, Bill. So long, Dorothy. No, let me explain to you, Alan. Get out of the way, Dorothy. Oh, please listen to me. Bill's not a criminal, I swear it. I told you, get out of the way. He's not guilty. Mike, they're getting away. Stopped here. We better split up into two groups. We'll go that way. Right. We'll take the main road. Follow me. instead of shooting your mouth off? No, not so fast. Your legs are longer than mine. I'd rather be hanged and choked to death. Wait, I got something very important to tell you. Wait, huh? 
it, it's something that'll interest you very much. Well, I'm listening. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to speak to you about that day at the table. Do you remember? I never got up the nerve. I was too scared of you. But now I may as well go one way or another. You remember I asked you if you'd ever gone to Missouri or thereabouts? Yeah. And you told me no? Now you figured out I was lying. No, well, even then I knew who you were. I suspected that. Is there anything else? Oh, I don't get mad. I'm not finished. I knew your father when we were both just kids. In fact, the both of us fought together during the war. Oh, you know, he was a wonderful man. Wonderful man, all right. So wonderful he ended up with six bullets in his back. There we are. Shoot to kill, men. No, no, curse Alan Davis and the day you two first ran into each other. You go on ahead, Al. I'll hold it. Right. No, oh, no, they'd roast us in there like rabbits. We gotta throw them off the trail. You grab the mine car and head for the valley. We'll rendezvous in the corral where they stole the horses. Huh? Quick, and good luck, kids. Same to you, Al. What are they doing? They stopped shooting. Must have got away. We gotta find them, men. down the cable. All right, start shooting, man. We gotta get him. Oh, that was smart. Whose side are you on? Ours! We'll never get him this way. Shoot, will you, instead of talking? Can't see a damn thing at this Shoot distance. Shoot him, will you? Uh. Now he's out of range. Should have told who you are. All the better. Bill James, I'll catch up with you. Don't you worry, I will. is to wait here. You'll risk getting captured to see Dorothy. I'd feel better if we looked for him in town. But why? I don't know. Just a hunch I've got. We'll see who's right. Maybe you are. I'll leave you two men anyhow. They might come in handy. Mike and you, George, stay here. Nick and Donald, stay with them. And keep a sharp lookout. The judge and I are going with Mr. Marshall. Alan! Alan, where's Bill? He's escaped, Dorothy. I'm sorry, but he's forced me to arrest him, and whatever the cost, I will. Alan, Bill's not to blame. They provoked him. You know he killed that man in self-defense. He took my side against those who wanted to steal my lands. I know, Dorothy. But he shot O'Connor, and that's against the law. In this country, law is very seldom on the side of justice. That's all finished. I'm going to re-establish law and order here, and very rapidly.
Over here, Al. Oh, thank God you're alive. And in one piece, it's a miracle. Six accused, one. Three. That's all I saw. Davis, the sheriff, and the judge weren't in the party. It was Marshall and his men. Always this Marshall. Why, it's clear. Haven't you guessed by now who he is? Explain that. What do you mean by that, Alonzo? Well, you know Marshall's in control of this part of the country. And if he's one of the ones who wants to dispossess Mr. Yeah, Dalton, I know that. Well, don't get mad, boy. I'm getting there. He's a man who killed your father. Are you sure of that? Yes, absolutely, because I worked for him over 20 years. Marshall is none other than Bob Ford. I thought so at first. Then I wasn't sure. Go to the ranch and leave me alone. Oh, this is no time to do that. Go on, I said I mean it. I want to come up against him when he's least expecting me. Go and warn Miss Dorothy. Oh, see how pig-headed you are. I should have said nothing. Well, look out. He's never alone. Up at this hour. Open up. It's me, Alonzo. Oh, my God. You scared me half to death. Who are they? They're a bunch of gods. Oh, the dirty rats. And where's Miss Dorothy? In there. What's happened, Alonzo? Where's Bill? Well, I was with him, and he's okay, he says. But he's in a terrible fear because he's been told Marshall is a man who killed his paw. Are you sure of that? As sure as shooting. Only now it appears like the shoe's on the other foot. Who told Bill? Well, matter of fact, I did. I was biding my time, Miss Dorothy. I understand. You stay here tonight. I suppose you saw the sheriff. He might arrest you. All I saw is they were sleeping like badgers. Get a bed ready for him. Come on with me. Yeah, but I want a real soft mattress, a real soft. I figure I deserve it after all I've been through. Up your hands. Don't move. Come on. Bill, listen to me. You're only hurting your case. You're probably right, Davis, but it's none of your business. Marshall's gonna die, and where he's concerned, I'm gonna do justice myself. What have you got on Marshall? First, he's not Marshall. He's Bob Ford, the man who killed my father. For 20 years, I've been waiting for this moment. My father may have been an outlaw. All I know is he was my father, a hero of the Civil War. Now, heroes ain't worth much when they're on the wrong side. Now, get over there. Into the cell. I'm sorry, Alan, but I have no choice at present. They rip you to pieces. I wouldn't bet on that. Don't make a move. I'm so glad we could all meet again. Shot of whiskey. Quite a while. Do you think your luck would last forever? They tell me you've gotten rich with the reward money. Save your breath, Billy boy. You're not long for this world. 
As long as I don't turn my back, I'll do all right. And I won't do that, Uncle Bob. The boys don't worry me either. They'll take their cue from you, like master, like man. And I mean especially your pal, Bruce. Try to help him. All right, you go on. I'll be with you in a minute. I've got a score to settle, too. shoot. It's senseless to go on. Come out with your hands up. We won't shoot. Sorry, I can't do that, Davis. Bill! Bill! Bill, what's the matter? Are you wounded? It's nothing. Only a scratch. Here, just load this thing. We've got to run for it. Come on, if we go this way, they won't see us. No, Dorothy. No, I've waited too long for this. I want to avenge my father. Bill! Come out or it'll be the worst for you. You're only hurting yourself with every bullet you shoot. Sorry, Commissioner, I don't care. This is my business and mine alone. Don't be a fool. They'll hang you. In that case, why don't they hang Bob Ford? Tell him to come out. I'll wait here. You hear that? We're never going to be able to convince him. He says you killed his father. Well, just in case, Strader, you keep an eye on him. Here, Bill. Grab this. Let's head for the loft. We can get him better from up there. Go with Alonzo. No, I'm staying here. Dorothy, go to the loft and leave me alone. I'll get out of this by myself. Don't go out, please. They'll shoot you if you go out. Bob Ford, here I am, ready for you. Are you coming out? Alan, tell him if he wants to show his face, I'm ready. Ford, prove you're not a coward and a murderer if you can. All right. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Don't shoot. <laughs> Come on, where's your guts, Bob Ford? Where's your marksmanship? I'm within range. What are you waiting for? Bill, drop that rifle. Now tell Ford to come and fight me man to man, not like he did with my father. All right. Ford, get out there. Here's my gun belt.
whenever you're ready. Thanks, Davis. You understood and helped me. Thanks for all you've done for me. Here's your revolver. I won't be needing it anymore. I've got to arrest you, Bill. Alan, why arrest him? I told you he killed O'Connor in self-defense. They drove him to it, really, Commissioner. It's up to the court at this point. I'm sorry. Bill James, come. <sighs> It won't be for long. He'll be back soon. I promise you. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> 